Our series, Changing the Game, profiles extraordinary women who are making a difference now and for the future generations. This morning, we're speaking with one business owner who is changing what women wear when they give birth. Caitlin Schollmeyer, she's a labor and delivery nurse and a doula. She never cared for the use of hospital gowns in childbirth. So she decided to design her own gown exclusively for her patients. And while she was pregnant with twins, she posted a TikTok video wearing her labor gown. That video went viral, getting more than two and a half million likes. And that led to the launch of her business called Leela. That was just out of her home she launched the business. Caitlin joins us now. Good morning, Caitlin. Morning. This is very relevant because we got a baby on the way. My sister's about to have a baby. You just had one. I had one a year plus ago. He's I've he's witnessed two. a few. <laughs> <laughs> he's a pro. <laughs> babies having babies. Yes. So, Caitlin, how did this all start accidentally? How was this an accident? You know, I designed the labor gown because I wanted to offer something to my clients and to my patients. Um, but I never thought that I would start a company from it. And it wasn't until I was in the hospital, I was on bed rest for a month, and I was wearing my own gowns every day. And I just made a video just for fun. It wasn't supposed to be anything about the gown. It was just a, you know, a lighthearted sort of thing, and everybody wanted to know more about it. And everybody wanted us to start a company. So me and my husband had to sit down and have a very real conversation about whether or not we wanted to do that. Because, I mean, that video got millions of views, and we got 160,000 followers overnight from it. And so... You know, it looked like a really great opportunity. But at the same time, it was also kind of scary because, you know, at the time we were expecting twins. They were going to come any day or week. And we also had just gotten kicked out of our rental home because at the heat of COVID, you know, the housing market was really lucrative and our landlord wanted to sell the house. Oh, wow. So we were kind of, I mean, for lack of a better word, like homeless. And we didn't have... Um, another home to move into. We had a trailer that we were going to move into. And so it was very much a leap of faith to be like, let's invest all of our savings into and starting this you company. made that decision two days before your twins were born. So we had made the decision to set a launch date that ended up being actually the day before oh my God. our twins oh, were wow. born. Wow. But that was because they came two weeks early. So it was, it was kind of crazy because I remember being in the NICU and having my phone just going off every second. Because people were like, where can I get that gown? Yeah, people <laughs> were buying them. And we ended up selling out 2,500 gowns in just two hours. So what do you think it is that makes those gowns resonate so much with women? You know, I think one of the things was that a lot of women didn't know that they had really any options, that they could go into the hospital and make any choices for themselves. They thought that they just had to accept what was given to them. And I think that was the first time a lot of people realized that they could decide what I wanted to wear, what I wanted to bring, what I wanted my birth to look like. I'm just astounded that there had never been a conversation with women about what That's what I was going to gonna ask. I mean, literally, yes. I, I just, like, how could this not have been addressed already? So the fact that, you know, it took you on TikTok to revolutionize a very important and intimate part of this process, yeah. it's like, why, why hadn't hospitals thought of this already? You know, I think that people had thought of maybe the idea, but... Personally, I have made some observations about, you know, the way that mothers are sort of treated, you yeah. know, when they transition into motherhood. I feel that sometimes you're expected to sort of sacrifice your identity, your comfort, your happiness in order to be a good mom, which, of course, is flawed, you know, but that's kind of our culture a little bit. And so people are just expected to accept what they're given and not ask for more, especially in that context. But in my opinion, you know, giving birth is one of the most significant yet vulnerable and anxiety-inducing experiences that you can go through. And making it even just a little bit better, I think, is really important. So, Caitlin, not only uh, have you started and founded this company, uh, you are also a United States Air Force veteran. You also hold the title of Mrs. United States 2020. And now you are studying to be a midwife um, and you're using TikTok, social media, to help educate uh, uh, folks about pregnancy, birth, and documenting your own journey yeah. to becoming a midwife. Why is that important for you? You know, I'll be honest with you. When I had that viral video, I had, like I said, 160,000 followers overnight. I was not a social media person. I still don't really feel entirely like a social media person. It wasn't really my thing. But I kind of felt that I had this message, and I also have this, like, captive audience now. <laughs> I have people who are listening, people who are pregnant. And I really wanted to share a message about being able to advocate for yourself, having your voice heard, working with your provider team to make mutual decisions. And it sort of serves this overarching message of like, 
mothers matter too. Mm -hmm. Because I think sometimes, like I said, we hyper fixate on baby and we expect mothers yes. to sacrifice themselves. And baby is so important. Of course, the health and safety of baby is important. Yes. But mothers are important too, and yes. they're not mutually exclusive. No. Absolutely. You can have both. It's important to have both, absolutely. Kate, Caitlin, thank you so much.